Good morning. So we'll be discussing about ECMO in toxicology. In last decade, there's a lot of interest have developed in the ECMO technology and use of ECMO. There are two reasons, main reasons for this. One, after this H1N1 influenza pandemic in 2009, we got a very good results and our interest moved towards the more and more ECMO in the area. And second, more important reason, miniaturization of circuit, advancement of technology, safe running of ECMOs, that has all encouraged us to think about the new areas of ECMO which we can explore. So now we can confidently say it is not just restricted to the operation theater. We can confidently do as an emergency physicians or critical care specialist in the intensive care units. If you look at the load of the poisoning, globally almost 3 million of acute poisoning cases happens. Those are reported and almost 2 lakh unintentional deaths occur annually. The unfortunate part, poisoning is always underreported for obvious reason because if most common reason we find that accidental till the time you realize that poisoning has occurred probably a lot of mortality and a lot of complication occurs or sometimes for the suicidal reason or homicidal they don't inform at all. So this is a bulk uh, burden in the society. So what exactly is the toxic? If you look at the a definition, all substances are poison, there is none that is not a poison, the right dose differentiate a poison with the medicine. So this is just the definition which uh, or an overview of the poisons, but if you look at the poisons which actually area of interest for us, it can be a drugs in the form of any anti arrhythmic class, uh, one, uh, one Williams classification, uh, beta blockers, antidepressants, anti-epileptics, opioids, anti-malarials, and anesthesia-related drugs. All these drugs, the overdosing or toxicity of these drugs can really be detrimental at some point of time if there is a cardiovascular collapse. Besides this, there's a lot of pesticides which can really bring the patient to your intensive care unit. If you look at the American data, American L1 report of American Association of Poison Control Center of 2014, we found that the main age group, if you look at the age group, these are the younger age group death due to the poisoning. Most of the patients are of the young age group. And the top 10 exposure in the all exposures from the basically analgesics, cosmetics, but if you look at the age wise, it's the mainly the analgesics, sedatives, antidepressant and cardiovascular drugs. These are the most common reasons which brings these patients to the intensive care unit. If you look at the rate in India, as per the National Crime Bureau report 2014, it's almost uh, now 11 to 12 per lakh population. This is a suicidal, suicidal death. And if you explore that, what exactly is the cause of these suicides? Almost one third cases are actually occurs because of poisoning. And most of the time, it is either the insecticides or other poisons. The age group remains the same. Most of these patients are of the younger age group. And besides this, if you look at the accidental death, almost 4% of the deaths in India occurs because of poison and that ranges around 20 to 25,000 per year. So the main substance which we are used in India for the poisoning, these are pesticides, sedative, drugs, chemicals. So this is a trend which is actually different from the Western world. The most common reason in the Western world is the drugs, most cardiovascular, cardiotoxic drugs. While in India, it's still the pesticides which are being used. So the general principle, what we do when there is a poison, the most important thing, we try to remove the toxin or we prevent the further uh, toxin absorption by various methods, putting a rails tube, uh, taking out the volume which has been ingested or if there is a surface contamination, we just try to clean it, remove the clothes of the patient and then we just try to enhance the elim elimination. by doing the client force diuresis or using other methods. And third important thing is the using the antidotes. But it all depends at what time your patient is reaching actually to your intensive care unit or your emergency department. If patient reaches early, probably it will be easier that you can use. But 
most of the time these patients when they are presenting to the icus or emergency department they have basically they are already have the cardiovascular collapse so the supportive treatment actually becomes a most important in these patients besides using antidote and using other measures because most of the toxins till the time reaches to the patient reaches to the icu is already absorbed in the body so you can enhance the elimination only when you are maintaining the hemodynamics you are taking care of the blood pressure and the parameters so what actually why there is a interest of ecmo why we are thinking of ecmo using in cases of poison because most of the deaths because of any poison we talk about the drugs or we talk about the insecticides pesticides most of the dead deaths are basically because because of cardiovascular dysfunction and cardiovascular collapse one second these patients are most of the patients are younger age group so they do not have much of the comorbid conditions and third this is the reversible condition because once the toxin is taken out from the body patient will recover completely so these are the three things we actually which initiates an interest of using these uh, ecmo procedure in these patients second ecmo definitely as we all know that it will help to maintain the tissue perfusion till the time toxin is coming out of the body as eliminating or it is metabolizing in the body it will maintain the perfusion this is what exactly we look for and it supports the filling our organs by maintaining the cardiac output so what how it helps it basically metabolizes because the cardiac output is improving so it will enhance the metabolism of the drugs or toxins and it will help in elimination because real perfusion or hepatic perfusion is improving so it will eliminate from the body and second from the central blood compartment drug will be distributed because once the you are putting the patient on ecmo it's an improvement of the circulation so there will be drug distribution so toxic load you can reduce and definitely it will allow you to manage these patients those patients who, uh, those uh, toxins which can be hemodialyzed or uh, can be hemoperfused it will allow you time to perform these procedure on these patients so basically if you look at this it's either bridge to recovery bridge to antidote because so, so few of the antidotes which are not available readily which are very costly so when the patient comes and you look for those antidotes till the time it will work as a bridge to antidote and bridge to elimination of the toxin <laughs> till we are able to apply the renal replacement therapies so which ecmo so we can use either the v ecmo or we can use the vv ecmo depending on what exactly is the issues so if there is a patient is having a life threatening hemodynamic instability or have throwing arrhythmias uh, this uh, fatal arrhythmias in those condition we look for v ecmo or there is a severe myocardial dysfunction we did an echo and we found that the ejection fraction has dropped down to say 20 25% and patient is not able to maintain his cardiac output or there is a cardiac arrest after the poisoning and cpr is going on vv ecmo it will be helpful for those drugs or toxins which actually produces ards are those inhalational chemicals which actually led to respiratory failure whatever i'm not going detail of this what they do it depends whether it's the water soluble or fat uh, fat soluble water soluble it will be absorbed and it will damage the alveoli and um, so whatever the indication is but what is important that if the patient is hypoxic and not able to maintain the saturation we can use the vvf our patient has has aspiration of organic hydrocarbons means paint removers are thinners in those condition also the vv echo will be helpful but is it a real scenario are we really using it i'm not talking about the indian scenario because we are still in the preliminary phase if you look at the data of the american poison control center in the 2014 sorry 2014 they had the total cpr because of poisoning 1163 and they instituted ecmo only in 42 cases rest all patient died and if you look at the report in 2012 almost similar condition though the use of ecmo has increased by almost three times in the 15 case, cases they did the ecmo rest all patient died so in the western world also the scenario is still not very good because we were not very confident on ecmo but there are certain contraindications beside those contraindication which are actual the contraindication of ecmo anywhere 
there are certain other contraindications where we cannot we should not use it so it will not be helpful like in those cases of cellular toxins like cyanide toxicity though a recent report has come uh, a one single case report that a cyanide toxic patient was successfully managed on ecmo uh, besides this hydrogen sulfide or sodium azide poisoning it will not be helpful or the if there is oxygen carrying capacity is lost because of toxins like in case of sodium nitrite in those condition ecmo will not be helpful or patient is severely vasodilated because of toxins then ecmo may not be helpful in those condition so this is the first case report actually uh, which was of the flaconide poisoning which was published a successful 30 year old male who had uh, depression and had a severe flaconide overdose and he was successfully treated with the VA. So what evidence we have? So most of the evidence actually we are having in the form of case report or case series or observational cohort. There is no randomized trial in the human population so far and it's not possible as well. The animal studies are definitely they have compared uh, some animal studies but again they have the limitations because you cannot uh, you induce a cardiovascular collapse and you put the patient, those animals on ECMO, but you cannot continue it for a very long time for certain reasons. And you cannot see a various stages of poisoning when patient is presenting. So these are the limitations of these animal study. Besides this, the, another paper was published for 100 ECMO cases from one center of France. Though they did the 100 cases and they published it out of which the six patients who were actually because of uh, admitted and went on the ECMO because of intox intoxication and these were with the various drugs like a chloroquine, tricyclic antidepressants or uh, other diuretic overdose and these patients had the better outcome in comparison to the other cohort means where the ECMO was indicated because of some other reason they had the better outcome when they used it for poisoning patients. Another um, case report was published for the dis uh, detoxin toxicity. Um, because it causes the life-threatening arrhythmias, any kind of ventricular arrhythmia can occur because of the digoxin poisoning. So in those conditions, basically, we have the antidote for digoxin, but it's a very costly and not readily available. So you can use, till the time you are getting this, probably you can you manage these patients with a cardiovascular collapse on ECMO, and once you administer the antidote, you can make them off ECMO once they improve. There was another case, uh, the largest series so far published is basically a 17 patients who had the poisoning and they presented with the shock and cardiac arrest who were treated with the extracorporeal uh, membrane oxygenation, 15 who had ingested the cardiotoxic drugs and 13 patients who were discharged without any neurological sequelae and with the good hemodynamics. So this was the very encouraging first case series that uh, uh, the good results are, can be obtained with the ECMO in the drug intoxication. And author concluded that emergency cardiopulmonary bypass is the last, last option in severely poisoned patient with the cardiovascular compromise is effective and relatively safe. So another retrospective cohort analysis was published. Um, this shows that ECLS, a good survival, almost 86% in comparison to the patient where ECLS was not used. The author concluded in case of refractory cardiac arrest and serious shock unresponsive to the conventional therapy, poison patient may benefit from emergent cardiopulmonary bypass. But the issue is these two cohort and the previous study is basically from the same institute and they have basically taken the similar patients. So this is another case report which was published in the carbon monoxide poisoning, the use of successful use of the ECMO where a 23-year-old male was found unconscious in the bathroom and a BA ECMO instituted for three days and patient recovered completely. This is another case report for the carbamazepine uh, toxicity, which is uh, anti -convulsant. And these are the last lot of case series, actually, case reports and series. This is a long list. The interest developed in 2014 when a, once a case report came for the accidental inhalation of aluminum phosphide fumes. It was from the uh, UAE from myocardial dysfunction. And in spite of high inotropic support and IABB hemodynamics did not improve. And they put the patient on ECMO for 10 days and patient recovered completely. Another case report was published from uh, India itself where a 17 year old boy with a severe LV dysfunction um, due to the aluminum phosphide poisoning who was treated with successfully with the ECMO. 
Um, this was another accidental poisoning with aluminum phosphide. This was another case report where ABA echo was continued for 10 days and patient was extubated. So the limitation of these case series of case reports is uh, uh, we are using a different terminology. Some write the ECLS, some is saying emergent cardiopulmonary bypass, some are using the echo. And moreover, the case reports always we write when we, ha we have got the good results. We do not report when the patient does not survive. So it cannot be a good uh, judgmental thing for this. So we have a published data from our own institute where um, we have shown that the timely intervention with the ECMO in patients with aluminum phosphide poisoning induced severe metabolic acidosis and cardiogenic shock may lead to the improvement in the overall survival. This was published in 2016. This is another outcome-based study where we divided it into two groups, high-risk group, and we found that the survival is almost 67% in those patients who were treated with the VA ECMO because of aluminum phosphide poisoning. So in our hospital, we have we started in 2013 and we have done aluminum phosphide cases, 44 cases so far. We have performed uh, VA ECMO in all uh, patients and ECMO was weaned off in 31 patients, but we could discharge only 28 patients. The, uh, the remaining uh, three died because of multi-organ failure, our infection, sepsis, um, our other uh, bleeding, our other issues. Um, so almost 64% patients have been discharged. All these patients were actually, before coming to us, were managed as per the guidelines and were shifted to us when uh, hemodynamic stabilization shock, shock was resistant in spite of highest possible medical therapy. So we look at the age, this is the age group of these patients and most of these patients has taken around two to two, three tablets. At the time of presentation, their heart rate was, uh, they were tachycardic, most of the patients were tachycardic. Mean blood pressure was in the range of 50 and ejection fraction was 23%. This was the ECG rhythm when we found almost nine patients, they had to do a defibrillation before taking up for ECMO and two patients actually required a CPR before starting ECMO itself. They were severely acidotic and uh, lactate levels were very high. So basically all these patients, anotropes, they were on the anotropes and vasopressors. Anotropic score was almost 85 uh, for each patient and almost one third of the patients were already on the vasopressin infusion before initiating the ECMO. And their uh, almost one third patient were again on the mechanical ventilation because of the poor neurological status or hypoxia or they had the cardiac arrest and we need to intubate them. The patients who were not intubated, even they had the neurological uh, irritability, they were very restless. So this was the duration of uh, ECMO run in these patients. Flow were kept around uh, between 2.5 to 3.6 liter and it was the, this was the duration and hospital ICU length of stay was 8 to 46 days. So the common problem which we came across uh, during the procedure was the surgical side bleeding and other area bleeding means upper GI bleed or uh, pulmonary hemorrhage. Acute kidney injury, almost one third of these patients actually had acute kidney injury. Hepatic dysfunction in few patients and sepsis. Post-procedural, we need to, in the initial phases, we need to ligate the femoral artery and do a femoral artery repair in two patients. Amputation, one patient required after eight months of the procedure and one required after 10 days of the ECMO. Upper GI bleed and pump lung ARDS in few patients and one patient had a convulsion as well. So basically why this happens, not only ECMO itself, this is the organ dysfunction may happen because of the direct toxicity of the aluminum phosphide. Those who have deal with this patient, basically what happens, once patient takes aluminum phosphide, there's a release of phosphine and this phosphine is absorbed in the myocardium and it leads to myocardial depression. So there's a direct toxicity and once the patient has a hypoperfusion, the secondary event occurs and a vicious cycle starts because of hypoperfusion and low cardiac output, a shock state develops and patient ultimately become acidotic and the vicious cycle goes on, cardiac function decreases further and further acidosis and lactic acidosis keeps going up. And so this is how, this is the, if you can uh, see, you need to intervene from the ventilation point of view, these patients, because they neurologically, they might be so irritable and hypoxic. Then they go in cardiogenic shock and in initial phases, you need to uh, start cardiovascular collapse with the inotropic supports. 
correction of acidosis and finally if nothing is working probably these techniques can be of the great help so to summarize the use of ecmo in an acute intoxication with a cardiovascular collapse is really encouraging there are fair chances of reversibility of the toxin because we know that either toxin will metabolize or toxin can be eliminated from the body and after this the patient there are fair chance that patient may recover if we just maintain the hemodynamics till that time so far the ecmo is the underutilized modality as far as we talk about the severe shock because of poisoning or cpi during the poisoning and we should think about use of ecmo in the hemodynamics of the poisoned patient if it is unresponsive to the conventional therapy so we should start thinking early for these uh, putting these patients on ecmo and we should always remember that the trend of the poisoning is different in the western world we look at this a cardiotoxic drugs while in our country are in the uh, asian countries it's more of the insecticide pesticides are other toxins so we need to understand that we need to collect more data on this and we need to understand that what exactly is the right time when we should intervene so that our patient's recovery become faster and we, he can send back home early